Okay, what I'm going to be beginning today is correcting an oil leak that I've got on my 2010 Volvo V70. The oil leak is way down in here and it's actually quite difficult to see unless you're looking at it from underneath the engine but effectively the um, decoupler pulley has a ceiling behind it on the side of the engine and I replaced the seal about three years ago and I did not use the tool when installing the seal thinking I could get away without using the tool and it began to leak. I'm not the first person to experience this. My good friend Kirill out in Mississauga, Canada has had the same issue happen so he went out and bought the, uh, the tool that allows um, you to press in the seal properly. So I borrowed that from him and I'm about to undertake this job. To accomplish here is taking the battery out. So make sure all your windows are up and sunroof's closed. So let's have a look underneath here. So I just got the car sprayed, under sprayed, so it's a little bit more difficult to see where the leak's coming from, but um, this is where I was seeing traces of it between the transmission and the engine, right here. This, these two pipes here were soaked with oil. Those are transmission pipes, but the oil's coming from up above and making those pretty slick. Um, this coolant pipe here is all wet with oil. And then if you keep following the oil upwards, you'll see it's, it's oily all the way up. Um, so we're gonna go with the premise that the seal is leaking, but of course we'll double check that when I start popping a bunch of plastic bits and pieces off. Okay, the other thing I would say is clear your trunk because you're gonna be taking out a lot of plastic pieces and it's nice to be able to store them somewhere while you're doing the work. Start by taking the air filter out. And that's a seven millimeter. T25 to take the air filter housing off. You don't have to take these right out, you do have to loosen them. Three. Extension to get to the last module. Four. Right off. air, gizmo, whatever this is. Okay, so I skipped a few steps here, but you've got to take the battery, battery out. To take the battery out, you take the rubber weatherproofing off, take the single plastic panel off, unscrew the positive and negative, and there's a single clamp down on the right, on the left-hand side of the battery. It has a 10 mil bolt in it. Take that out, put it aside. You should be able to just lift the battery out. Once the battery's out, the tray has four retaining bolts. You gotta take the tray out. One, two, three, four. And I think they are eight millimeter bolts. Um, the trunk, 
the hood latch is right here, so it's held in place by a little clip here that you want to gently pop out. Take this piece of plastic out next. I think it just pops right out. There's another little clip here that holds the uh, hood release in place. So lift that out of there. And once that's out, wow, that's pretty rusty. Once that's out, you should be able to take the battery tray right out. This is the clip for the hood release. Don't lose that. AC compressor, tensioner, auxiliary belt, power steering pump. Those are all things we're gonna have to take out. And then the leak, you may be able to see now. The leak comes from way down. Still can't see it. It's below the AC compressor. One thing you want to always make sure is that the vacuum pump is nice and dry. In this case, this is looking totally dry, so the leak is not coming from the vacuum pump, but you can definitely see some moisture down there and behind the belt, so we'll be able to see more of that as I start to pull some pieces out. Sorry? Next step is to remove the tension from the tensioner. Use a 19 millimeter socket. Put it right there. Rotate downwards. And then there's a little spot. You can put a little pin in. Just there. So just put the pin in there. Three millimeter Allen key will do the trick if you don't have this. But this comes with a new tensioner. So now that the belt is loose, take note of how the belt roots. Take it. And now that it's, actually you can't take it off, but you have to loosen it so that you can start working on the compressor next. So that's what we're gonna do. Loosen it up by hand first. There are lots of bolts that you need to keep track of, so I would say either put the bolt right next to it, or um, ideally just put it back on. The other one here is a 10. One long, we need to take this off. I think that's 10 mil as well. Put that back on. Once you've taken this off, you can do that. Once you've taken this off, This back on here. For now. So that's loose. That's loose. It's loose. Take care of that one. Is that another 10 or is that a 20? This little plate here, there's one more bolt under here that you need to get access to. So move that over. Another 10 mil bolt here. And that has a 
this plate should come out. And then once that plate's out, you can take this last bolt off here. Let's see now, I'm already losing track of which bolts go where. Put that one back on there. And put this bolt back where it belongs, here. That's out. Set that there. You can take this crazy bracket off, which I think comes out this way. A little bit of persuasion. Clutch. Okay, so you can now take the harness out. Well, the the bracket that sits between the power string pump and the compressor. 10 mil bolts again. Lazy. How that goes. That. Okay. Power steering pump. We've got to take this off for sure. This is where the ratcheting wrenches come in handy. There's another one there that I think needs to come out. I just don't remember why. Yeah, you have to take this whole bracket off. This entire bracket's got to come off because you've got to back this power steering pump out. Now, down below, right below this hose, there's another bolt right there that you're going to get rid of. It's another 10 mil bolt. Let's just leave that down there. Just place that bolt right there. One more bolt you have to take out. And it is located way down here. Just get a socket in there, ratchet in there. Okay, that's it. So it's just a bolt. Pull it out. It's identical. Place that down there as well. Power string pump now should be loose, as you can see. I think you need to take the power steering pump out, you need to unscrew this bolt here. I think is a T25. And then unscrew the other side, so both of those, and then it comes apart, which allows you to take the, the belt um, 
take it in behind the power steering pump. So let's do that right now, 225. Get through there. Let's see if we can get that in there. There we go. Can you see that? So it's a small T25 screw. There are two of them. Once those are out, the pulley splits in two. It's the power steering pump. Those are the two T25s that I'm talking about there. This one was on pretty loose. Oops. That out. Try not to lose that. Taking this little bracket out right here. have to pull the power steering pump this way to the right and this is getting in the way. So I'm just going to take that out all together. There are two. These are identical. The bracket right there. Now this should move. Right. There's a little pin back here that you gotta get rid of. It is now it out. There it is. There's the pin, you have to replace that. Okay, so you got the belt out. Okay, so you got the compressor. You can now lift that out of the way, I think. There are some clips. There's a clip on this hose here. Clips onto the compressor. Undo that carefully. Without breaking it, hopefully. This compressor, I think. Now come up. And out of the way. And it needs to be suspended. There's another T25 here. If you take that out, it gives you a little bit more wiggle room. So let's do that next. to suspend the compressor up like that because the area that I need access to is here. That's the pulley that I need to take out. I'm going to start with the tensioner bolt right here, which is a 10. Wow, it's on there solid. Put that in there. 
fasteners there. So now let's get this bolt off. maybe they are 13 wow okay down the middle take this harness bolt out to get to it. I think it's an 8 mil bolt. It's a bit of a nuisance. Yeah. Okay, so that's out. And let's just leave this ratcheting wrench in there and use my 10 mil wrench in behind let's see if I can gain access to that last bolt and I can okay that's it so let's leave that I'm gonna leave both of those ratcheting wrenches in there see if I can just take this right out carefully So I got bolts inside, I got bolts. Oh, and look at, there's my seven millimeter thread. One thing to mention, there is a um, oddly shaped adjustment washer that belongs on the bottom. Do not lose that. And you'll understand why when, when I go to reinstall. Uh, let's get the tensioner out of the way. Now I've got full access to what I actually need to work on which is this thing right here because it's a cover that you need to remove okay. there you go the center's popped off so now you get a flat head in there right. hopefully you get the idea here i didn't have um, any footage that actually shows me popping the cover off but it does pop off and it must be replaced when you reinstall the pulley Necessary tools for this. Basically, this goes inside this, and it goes. This is what you're going to use to take it out. Um, this is the counter hold. This is what you're actually unscrewing. Counter hold is a 23. In your alternator set, you should have a half inch gizmo that connects directly to that. way <clears throat> wow okay so it's on there pretty tight use a um, either an adjustable wrench or a in my case I used was it 22 lean it up against the engine and then you're gonna need an awful lot of force to get this loose but it will come loose and it it's it's counterclockwise to loosen and uh, it eventually comes out. But wow, it was on there pretty tight. Oh, 
lose that screw. Soaking wet. Interesting. Looks good. I've replaced this once, so this is in decent shape. We're not going to mess with that. See it right there. <laughs> you can see the oil accumulation at the bottom, so there is no doubt that the seal is the culprit. There it is. So I'm going to clean, I'm going to pull that out, clean everything up, and then we'll reinstall tomorrow or we'll install the new seal tomorrow. What I find works pretty well is just take a drill and carefully poke a hole in the seal and then put a pry tool in there. Ah, it's hard to get the drill in here though. There we go. Crazy. Put too much pressure on. Be very careful drilling. Don't put too much pressure on the drill. You only want to drill through the seal. You don't want to poke through anything metal in behind it. So be very sensitive to when you pierced through the seal and then stop immediately. Make sure you don't go through too hard. It's still the seal. See that? There. A little bit more. See, I got the little hole there, and then all I gotta do is put a screw in there, or you know, sometimes what you can do is pry a tool like that, put it in there, you may be able to pry this out. I think I'll be able to, I just can't film it. I ended up getting that seal out, not with that pry tool, but with a, a small, uh, I think it was um, Robertson screwdriver, and then carefully prying it out. Don't be afraid. the seal you need. That's the seal bag. This is the replacement seal here. And then this is the proprietary Volvo tool you need. So what you do, I've got my old seal on here, is screw this plastic bit on, take the seal, push it in like so, all the way on, oh wait, before you do that, lube it up, some more on the outside, cool, slip your seal all the way on, 
it through. Once the seal is on, you can take that plastic pin off. Uh, try in here. There we go. Take the plastic pin off. Don't lose the plastic pin. Now, thread thread the tool into the coupler assembly. All the way. It's easier said than done here. Hang on. And then once once the threading is all the way on, that allows for a nice smooth transition between the tool and the actual coupling. Or male piece and then I'm told you can just press this right on sometimes it can be tricky so you take this press it on till it bottoms out just took a little bit of elbow grease there and it has clearly bottomed out tool is on you can take the tool back out And screw it. I borrowed this tool from my friend Kirill, so thank you, Kirill, for this. Looking good, and you can see the seal is installed pointed inwards in the middle, and that's what the that's the outcome we want.